Are we close? We are close. We are. Official videographer. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. <laughs> I'm the official citizen that is keeping him honest. Oh. Robin. Yes. Are you assuming that we're not honest people? <laughs> no, I'm assuming I need to keep people honest. That's what I'm assuming. Oh. Well, because I would have been very hurt and insulted if you had aimed that remark Almost at, at remark. me. Well, what was the remark? He said, I, I, he asked if I was the official videographer. I said, I'm the official one that's keeping them honest. This camera keeps people honest, I think. No, I think uh, the I, conscience I don't think does. So. <laughs> Let's hold. Camera. It, it may record things that people aren't quite sure what they had said because unless you have total recall but I I think most people want to be honest and try to be Robin. Oh I would agree with that. Yeah. And now you got a special recording now going too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we have another well, one. I suppose that makes the minutes so much easier, huh? Oh yeah. Plus it makes those who think we're not honest because we keep them honest. Okay, here we go. Well, you exterior. Know, I think most of the boards that I've worked with usually, you know, call <coughs> the staff out by, you know, re you know taping. Well, here, tell me. Because it certainly helps when you try to put minutes together. That helps. Yeah, yeah. really does. So, any help we can get, thank you. Um, We've got a quorum, huh? Golly sakes, yeah, in just a couple minutes. Couple minutes yeah, too. We can talk our little hearts talk out. Talk. There you go. I think one actually goes into the definitions as well. Oh, wow. Or a little work in mind. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, what would be the idea? I'll call the meeting in order. It is okay. six thirty, and uh, I will call roll. Uh, Justin, did he call or was he excused? Yeah, he had told us he would not be here. He's actually uh, excused. That's right. That's right. From the last time. Okay. And Doug Dahlberg. Yes. Frank. Here. Jim, Jeremy. He's. He's excused. excused. He went to. The Use his family thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Myers here. Ray, we know is excused, right? Keith. Yes. Okay, Jerry. Yes. And Doug Stewart. Yes. All right. We have a quorum. All right. Motion to adopt uh, the agenda. I'll make a motion to adopt. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. Uh, approval of the February 11th, 2013 meetings. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, our next agenda item is, uh, actually it's a continuance <coughs> of a variance request and the reason that we did continue it was um, to hopefully uh, have the applicant uh, plow through the snow and be able to get to the meeting yes, and provide uh, information that we needed to be able uh, to make a decision yes. on the request. So I wonder if staff could maybe uh, just s summarize um, uh, the project, the findings of that, and, uh, and then uh, we do have some questions that the applicant uh, can answer as well as provide any other information they feel would be permanent to the request. <laughs> we have to forgive Doug because he dragged himself to the meeting. He has been sick. And, and we applaud we applaud those that <laughs> yeah. Your enthusiasm is noted in the minutes. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes, we'll note that in a minute. Um, let's see, we have a variance for a very yard setback. Um, it is for country and suites, PG Enterprises, LLC only. Um, it is a request to increase the rear yard setback from 40 to 15 feet behind the existing structure and to decrease the rear yard setback from 40 to 30 feet to construct a 20 room, 21 room addition. Um, the rear yard of this property abuts Highway 10. There's an existing motel on lot, two block, one lot to the south, 216 feet. Um, the owners would like to add a 700 foot breakfast space on the west side of the existing motel to meet the franchise franchisor's requirements. Um, let's see. The existing country in the suites was issued a certificate of occupancy on April 18, 1997. Um, lot 1, Block 1 currently has a 24 by 36 storage building on it. And the owners would like to add a 21 room, two story addition on this lot. Um, on February 25, 1997, regular city council meeting, the city approved a variance for a decrease in the rear yard setback to 10 feet for, pro for property described as lot 3, lot 1 of GG and all addition to current Perkins restaurant. This press was also zone B3. On March 1st, 2004, regular city council meeting, the city council approved a variance for, the, for a decrease in the rear yard setback to 10 feet on the property to the south, described as the south, 216 feet, uh, lot two, lot one, GG and all addition. Um, that at the time was uh, 
quiz mills, I do believe. Yep. I, I don't really know what it is right now. That parcel is also zone B3. The parcels, the two parcels we are talking about are also zone B3. Okay, and Doug, you had uh, forwarded some of the questions that we had yes, I to the applicant, and uh, maybe you can address those again, and between uh, we can get that additional information. Yes, um, we did also have one of the adjacent landowners wrote a letter in favor of grants and grants, but requested that a fence be erected along the property line between their property and yours. Um, the main, major concerns we had last meeting, the height of the proposed 21 room addition. <coughs> this is required for setback purposes in a B3 district. And we were also requesting <coughs> a larger map showing building setbacks on all sides of the new addition. Um, we were kind of worried um, that uh, Mr. Gengelhoff would have to reapply for another variance for some of the other setbacks. And so we made the motion to continue the public hearing at this meeting. So I brought a full set of plans so that I could make sure that I had the proper distances and measurements because you're right, this is a little bit ambiguous and I wouldn't want you to make a decision without having the good information. So Jerry and I looked at the plans and put a scale to them and uh, we would be, as it describes in your uh, information there, we would not be 10 feet, we'd actually be 15 feet from the, from the fence line for the breakfast portion. And then if you look at the addition where it juts over, we were asking for a 30 versus 40 and we're actually 38 feet, so we're, we're uh, actually not even 30 feet, we'd be actually 38 feet from the fence line when you add that. And you were asking 30. For 30. So we're, we're pretty good there, but what the, the other question that you guys had, which is uh, obviously appropriate, is we would be matching the existing peak uh, on the addition. So it, you know, it all call lines up. So then Jerry and I looked at it, and we're actually 38 feet high versus 30. So the way I understand it, and talking with Jerry, is that we would need eight feet of variance added to that 50 foot setback as you look at the addition uh, on here facing the east side. East side, yes. The east side, exactly. So we're, we're, we got 50 feet, we're okay there, we established that, but we're actually uh, now going to have to, provided you give me the variance on the other two pieces on the west side, I'll have to fill out a, a variance and come back because I didn't realize my fault that um, the peak I, I'm, over I'm, over, I'm actually over 30 feet by 8 feet, so I think the way it reads is anything over 30 feet you have to have an additional foot for every foot of height. Is it 30 or 35? 30, I believe. I've got a page I looked it up. Just, yep. Yeah. So Jerry kind of verified that, <laughs> yeah, but he can for the record. So on the east side where the new proposed um, two floor addition. Yes. Currently, because we couldn't tell, right. that would be 50 feet of setback yes. from your property line yes. on the east side. Yeah. And, and on the west side, right. you would have at least 30 feet of setback. Right. You're asking for 30, so there's 8 feet there. There's additional there, yeah. And mm -hmm. if this was, you know, having, if this had to move back, you might have that 8 feet. Yep. And then with the breakfast edition, you were asking 10, and it's actually 15. And it's actually 15. Yep. So that would, and by um, shifting, and, and you know, just to clarify, <coughs> usually, you know, when we're looking at variances, we're, we're really not looking at steps, building, you know, site plans. Uh, except to see whether the proposed heights or the proposed setbacks could fit in the envelope right. that you're wanting. Right. That's all. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be, you know, asking for uh, as many details. But but right. we did need those to make. That makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. okay. Very. 
Jerry, that was page. Did you have that? Um, the height? Yeah. It's 30 feet. Uh, okay. And if he's talking 3D, it's a one foot for every. Yep. Okay, yep. so it would be eight feet. But if he, if in their construction plans, could shift that second floor addition back, it would still be within the 30 feet he's asking for. Correct. That's an option you can consider if he would want to put a bigger job in his building. Right. That, that's right. one option, or he'd have to come back and ask for a variance on his front yard setback from 58 to 50 if he doesn't want to jog the building. If he leaves the building at a 30 foot setback and he's got 38, he could jog the building an extra eight feet and meet 58 feet in the front. Or another alternative would be to shrink or sh the width of, yeah. you know, the depth of the building. But that's not our decision, but but these are alternatives that he could look at to, to meet in, in your B3, um, it says that there shall be no height restrictions on buildings in the B3 district except that for every foot that a building exceeds 30 feet, an additional foot of setback shall be provided from the nearest property line. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take that literally, what's the nearest property line? Well, usually it's the straightest line. I know, but his rear lot line is the nearest property line, so does it only mean that it applies to one lot line? No, it would be whatever property line is close. Like, like his addition here, he's having to look at both east and west because it impacts the setbacks east and west. And his breakfast nook, it does not impact the, the east, it impacts the west. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's reasonableness. Uh, what were your thoughts now well, that you know that there, there right. are some... I think my, my thought would be to have to apply uh, for the variance from 58 to 50 because with the way that the footprint of the building is set, I wasn't looking to expand the envelope of the building anymore. Than or, or shove it. Right, over. yeah. The, the other thing that was in a discussion, um, in our discussion, but we did not know for a fact, uh -huh. uh, when we were looking at some of these drawings, it, it looked like there might have been a proposed um, uh, or a proposal to purchase a couple more feet? To no, that was just, a, that, yeah, and that's a good point. It was a little misunderstanding, is that I own the lot to the north all the way to the fence to the Walmart. To the so north. so mm -hmm. that little notation was that at some point I would just have to add something additionally to it, because but I already own it. It wasn't meant that I was going to add to the west, to or the, to the east, I'm sorry, to okay. the east. Yeah. We, we weren't quite sure on that, yeah. so you've clarified. Yeah. So I apologize, it oh, was no. a little ambiguous there. Um, any other information that would help us um, in making a recommendation to the city council? Chair? Yes. What is uh, the other thing that comes into play, and I think you have more than a number of parking stalls, but uh, if I look at the print, I think you've got 30 parking stalls uh, proposed here. Uh, in a B3, it's one parking stall per unit. So you're adding 21 units, plus one stall for every eight units in addition, just for overflow, so you have to have three additional. Then the third thing that goes with, plus one parking stall for the number of employees during the highest shift. Okay. How many employees are you going to have there? Do you know that? Your highest. What's your highest? That's um, 24 so far we're talking right. about. Right, we're only talking about with, uh, with 21 additional rooms, you basically f you figure about one additional housekeeping staff per about 10 or 12, so the most more would be two. All right. So, so we should 26? Yeah, 26. Yeah, 26. Yes, you but you're, you're, you were proposing in your application 30? 30. Yeah. When you look at how it's drawn now, and, and, and again, assuming your building permit uh, mm -hmm. includes the with the handicap and the additional parking, uh, you've got the uh, 30 stalls, I believe. Yes. So if you're going to be more than adequate to meet your parking. Mm -hmm. The other thing that comes into play, and you show the stormwater holding ponds in the back, which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to need the calculations to verify that mm -hmm. the runoff uh, equals that. So again, your architect, engineer, who's ever doing that, would. By that would actually calculate and they know how to do it. They know how to do it. Oh, okay. Um, so, I guess another point to discuss: if the setback, let's say <coughs> that was the option you chose, 
uh, to come in to get a uh, 50 foot setback as opposed to a 58. Um, Jerry, an applicant, do you anticipate it having to reconfigure the proposed parking spots then? No, not if it comes with the same footprint with the 21 buildings. It's just the yeah, but what about your your access? Because you're swinging, you're, you're you're going north, you're coming off from the east, swinging, and then going north. You wouldn't be scrunching up the access to get to the parking spot, would you? If you took eight feet off. Of no, because this no. picture is is with a fifty foot. It's with the fifty foot. He has a gotcha. driveway in there. So what the, what you see drawn here is a fifty foot. It's fifty already. So if we left that alone, yeah, we'd okay. be good. It was just a question because yes. of that Murphy's law. What if what if it goes to, from fifty to thirty uh, or uh, forty two? Yeah, yeah. And, and which it, he wasn't yeah. proposing anything less. But okay, um, I think <coughs> would the fence be a problem? I wasn't anticipating building a fence to be okay. to be honest, I, and I haven't had any communications with them to to that effect. So. Okay, I, I guess our understanding was that you know, and, and maybe it's just and that, that was just educating yeah. your your uh, hotel customers mm -hmm. is that apparently it has been used as a doggy dump or doggy do walking dump. area. Yes, mm -hmm. a little doggy walking park that might have left. Uh, and their excrement on oh, the neighbor's okay. property. Well, that was yeah. that was one of the concerns. That's that's the reason they asked for yeah. fans. Right now, as I recall, in looking at it, there's a fair amount of the trees that have been planted, the pines and of those fir type that pretty much defines a pretty uh, strict boundary line right now. <coughs> well, plus, like a lot of doggy parks, from the signage. You know, if you own. Right. The property to the north. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's another amenity for your guests. Right. Yeah, we could certainly provide some signage or mm -hmm. something of that nature. Sure. Yeah. And that, if you have to come in for permission use, which you probably don't, but that might be, a, you know, really heavily <coughs> encourage that. that yeah. We've tried to remain yeah. pet friendly just because we have a lot of customers that travel with their pets and. <laughs> Um, their family. Yeah, exactly. So we're hoping we can continue to do that. So. But that would be a unique service, too, because mm -hmm. you don't see that actually designated in some of the other motels. Right. Um, any other questions or recollections? or? <coughs> I think the biggest thing was I don't think we have a lot of issues with the, the to the west because of the highway. Sure. But like I said, that the fact that on the east, because of the height of your building, mm -hmm. would be the variance from 50 to 58 feet. Right. That's going to be the biggest concern. For well, in order to make sure that the landowners have the appropriate notification, I, my understanding is I probably have to fill out something again. Is that correct? Um, yes, because it really right. does need to be public notice. Right. And so we, we couldn't add that as an item tonight. I understand. Okay. Um, if we were to consider, um, we would have to be under the understanding that you could need setbacks we might variances can put conditions on and what we could do is make a recommendation if we were in favor of granting the proposed uh, setback variances on condition that you apply for um, that additional uh, that additional setback and that it was approved by city council so oh that's <laughs> Your that could be, okay, that that could be okay. a condition. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have right. facts in front of us to right. do it and not continue. With the so basically, we would be approving this conditional use permit or this with the variance. Un, this variance, excuse me, with the with the understanding that another variance under has to be filed under okay. the condition that that variance be applied for and, and approved. approved. And approved, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. By the city council, does that that sound pretty? Because that way we're not stopping the process, but, but there is a risk to the applicant. 
Well, you got to cover your bases. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, and, and you know the project fits, um, you know, in the first in the neighborhood and everything else, and and really, um, just because other properties near you get a variance doesn't necessarily set a precedent. Right. But um, being that you are restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with Highway 10, and, and nothing that the city can do about that. Right. So, I mean, there really are conditions that, mm -hmm. that are beyond the city's <coughs> ability. Right. Okay. Any other, Jerry? Any other? Um, Do you um, want the proposal, or do you want a? We would entertain a motion, motion. including that condition, but the motion is for for the two, yeah. as as requested. Okay. Even though he has a little wiggle room there, it's what he has requested. Okay, I would make a motion that we approve these variances with the condition that he comes back for a uh, variance to the east. For setback, variance. for setback variance to the east, and that be approved in order to, to make all the variances work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say. I, I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to write it fast enough to get there. That's funny. Uh, any That's other? Good, I didn't know what any other about. condition, Jerry, that uh, you feel would be reasonable? And the. Um, Variances were as requested by the applicant. Okay, uh, as requested for, for his application. Okay. So we because we need those exact uh, variances at that request in the minutes. All right. Um, did somebody second? Well, I was asleep. I made the motion. And then she made the motion. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Um, and this is, we're a recommending body, <coughs> so this will go forward to the city, um, and they will have all the language, you know, as far as the condition, and Jerry would know what they, that would come. <coughs> we have a, a meeting next week. You want to wait until we go through the variance next month? Uh, I suppose. And present it to the council at one time, I would assume. That's okay with you. I mean, yeah. I could go through and, and present it with those conditions, but that's fine. Again, I think you're better off to have all three right. covered so that we're doing it it's done. Total, package, yeah. total package. Okay. Would you recommend that I come to that meeting as well then? Yep. Okay. In case there's a question. That would be to the actual city council meeting. Yes. Correct. 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 And that would be after our next public hearing on, right. on your new variance request. Okay. Right. okay. All so then, right. Well, we look forward to your next application. And then I would uh, get with Doug to fill out the additional piece. Right? Yep. And we have to get it in fairly quickly so I can get it uh, advertised. Okay. It has to have 21 days, right? No, 10, 10 days. 10 days. Okay. Ten, not business days, but ten calendar days, right? And you don't foresee any other issues? No, not really. Okay. Okay. The stormwater management, there's plenty of room, plenty of room. even okay. though, and, and that would be, um, it, it, it isn't necessarily our condition, but it is in the ordinance right. that it would have to be engineered. Before we issue the Depending building on, permit, you will yeah. have to meet those stormwater requirements. Yeah. Yeah. I would guess and you know, probably the close already with the yeah. with the glass. Yeah, and you have plenty of food for the north. Yep. So. Okay. Well, uh, thank, thank you. you for attending and yes. providing that information so yes. that we could make a, a decision. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, good evening. You too. Yes, you too. Both times we've talked about this edition, it snowed. <laughs> a month ago. I know. And, uh, and the timing is weekend. very good. <laughs> so next it doesn't snow next month. Well, yeah, yeah, there's no one that doesn't snow next month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I'll be yeah. together with you there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. See you. What is it actually asking? Yes. Actually, your minutes from last month. Yep, I have. Okay. That sounds good.
All right. Well, that was relatively painless. But well, if, if he even had his full set of drawings in that we would have noticed that right after get go when he applied for his first drawings, uh, we, we, we would have known about the height concern. But we didn't see it until after the fact. So Well, I know you were trying to do measurements up, but you didn't know whether or not they were to scale. Right. You know, if yeah. the plans had been shrunk or, you know, or no, enlarged. Okay. Get it back. Very good. Okay, we move on then to old business. And um, item one is planning <laughs> and developments without the underlying zoning. Uh, and First Lutheran Church, we able to... Uh, Actually, we meet, I meet with them tomorrow. Okay. So, well, Again, we'll just put right. it on next. So just so you know, uh, sure. subject to, uh, they want to know why and the, the logic behind it, subject to their uh, review and, and blessing, so to say, then we'll put that on as an agenda item for your next. Sure. Um, we'll move that to next month based on, <laughs> based on the, the, the right, what yeah, their desire is after you meet with them. Okay. All right. We might get Doug home and tucked in bed before you know it. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, next item of old business, public benefit district to include cemeteries, golf courses, state parks, city parks, ball fields, and, and you know, I suppose they're all inclusive, you could just say athletic fields or sports fields. Yeah, that's probably good for the kids, but yeah, that's just kind yes. of nice, I'm sorry. No, I, and, and I appreciate it, I notice you're still plugging along, and that is great. Um, we happen to have um, a three-page duplicated oh, okay. public benefit district that the staff has been working on. Do you want to uh, kind of give us the the business again? No. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I guess if uh, the last meeting or one meeting before that we had talked that somebody wanted or you guys wanted something in writing that it's much easier to, I would just say it, um, do a little editing on something that's already in place than to try and build it from scratch. So basically what I did, I took from other towns, other cities, and I went through and I came up with a, the things that we were looking for, which included the cemeteries, the golf courses, state parks, city parks, and so forth. I put them in here. Mm -hmm. um, however, when I got all done, I went and I looked at our, our PUD, Part and voila! The, and voila, the same stuff was in there. She had wondered why. <laughs> and I, I built it from you kind all of the stuff. You cut that, and pasted that to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's good. I built it from other cities and towns and mm -hmm. kind of discussed a little bit with Jerry and some other people. And, you know, some things are good, some things are bad. But, I mean, if you look at it, we kind of took care of the cemeteries. And if it's a public benefits district, just to include city, county, state, so forth and so on. We yeah, don't sure. have any yeah. government-owned cemeteries in Little Falls. Yeah. So right out the get-go, the cemeteries can kind of well, go away. Well, they're kind of taken care of. They're they're really now they're allowed in the B three in the B three, which was well suited. So we, you know we could possibly recommend that that's not included, but this is still a work in progress. So sure. it, it can stay there. Um, one of the things that, that I noticed um, in a lot of the other, whether it's called public slash semi-public or quasi-public or semi-public or public benefit, is that they aren't necessarily um, land uses by government entities, but they're for the benefit of the public. Mm -hmm. So if you had a fraternal order of the Eagles or, or Boys and Girls Lions Club, Club or, or the Lions yeah. Club, it, it's, it's for a public benefit, it does, but they're actually privately owned. Um, it might be um, a ball field owned by the yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, but it's for public use. So when you look at public benefit, it isn't necessarily find a niche for government-owned mm -hmm. uh, buildings and land uses, but those that benefit the public, whether they're privately owned or, or the public sector owns them. The other thing you could consider, I notice sometimes they sort of wrap 
what they call public and uh, open spaces and or or recreation or we could look at that as a standalone some cities that are larger do that where they take out parks and recreation and make a standalone but it could be an overlay district also the public benefit district could be an overlay district like a PUD and I think that's why you saw the golf course you know you saw some of those um, you know, soccer fields and things like that mentioned in that PUD because a lot of times it's more of a complex um, uh, matching of activities and accessory uses. It isn't just like a single use. So I can see where some of that is in. So, you know, that's also for discussion is that if you had, let's say it's the west side fire station or something, and it's in a um, residential district, you could do an overlay on that piece of property if it met some of the other size, but it would act almost like a PUD where um, maybe setbacks are a little different or maybe um, the, the signage is different because it's a, um, more of a business use or public use, um, screening, noise, parking. So some, some cities use the public benefit district basically as a ghost or an overlay district so that it can go any place. That's another thing to consider. And I guess at the time that I was doing this, I was looking at the ones that we had up here that are PUDs, which are all government owned. But that's point, okay. You know, yeah. It would fit in. It yeah. would fit in there. But, you know, like Jerry had mentioned, though, I mean, some that might be city owned are not necessarily suited to be in a, uh, or classified as a public benefit. And that was his convincing. You know, but um, what do you think? Okay. I think we kind of cover that, though, don't we? Under or any other political subdivision, wouldn't that cover organizations or not? Uh, no. Not no. Okay. <clears throat> it, it could say um, or private sector uh, land uses, which benefit the public. I mean, you could, yeah. because it, when you look at a lot of the preambles in, in you know, in some of the other city ordinances, they kind of throw it all in there and talk about it, it includes government uh, buildings, but a lot of times your public benefit district kind of focuses more on service. Uh, you know, there's a building there. But it's like, like City Hall, you know, it, it, it's, it provides services to people. It, it's a building, but I mean, so it kind of focuses on services or um, that kind of thing. But Human services type thing. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Hospitals. Hospitals, you know, courthouse. Courthouses, yeah. governments, uh, you know. So um, I think we can tweak that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, because really, like Jerry and Doug have pointed out, you know, it's really so to benefit the public. So basically you would put in there some, sector. yeah, private, private property for public use. Yeah, it yeah, could okay. say where you're talking about um, property owned by the city, it yeah. could be owned or by the private sector. For public use. For public use yeah. or to benefit or semi public use. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Or it could be a semi, yeah, public or semi public. And a lot of different towns, as you notice, and some of those other ones like Renamin, they have a lot of churches and hospitals and, and um, rec centers and um, yeah. different things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Which would kind of fall in that same area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't necessarily have to make it so complicated that you 
break out, you know, all these Every things. Listing, yeah. yeah, because though that you know, take mm -hmm. the splash part or the splash pad or the you know the that complex water that your kind of water park, that's really for the public benefit. It, it might even be a private and public partnership. We don't know. But it is for the public benefit. But it is a recreational um, land use. So you wouldn't necessarily have to also make a recreational and open um, open space zoning yeah. district. Yeah. You just throw it in here, yeah. and it falls under public benefit. I mean, that is a nice umbrella. But I think you guys, I think they've yep, done pretty good, haven't they? Yep. That. Now, the one thing you might want to give us feedback on is, do you want it as an overlay district? Like, the, like you know, the flood, when when we have to do the setback, the back, you know, you've got this overlay on top of the underlying district, so you're piling on you know, more setbacks or can't build in blocks, and whatever else the state is telling you you can't do near the water, which is, you know, many times an overlay district. Even the airport could be, you know, if it was in town, it could be an overlay district. But why don't you ponder that and see how you want this, I mean, how you want this to serve our, our ordinance? Does that make sense? Does it? Does it? Well, do you I, think I like it might work. Personally, I like the idea. I would make a few other little changes on it, but we'll yeah. explore the overlay uh, idea and see how that fits. Mm -hmm. well, it's nice we come across a few other communities. Uh, it'd be nice if we had a so-called expert in planning and zoning within the city, uh, outside of Doug and myself. And, we're we're a, we're a, a learning curve in process here, so. <laughs> Aren't we all? I know. It's nice to bounce it off to some other people who've been there and done it before. So yeah. we'll we'll continue to lean it, looking at. Yeah. Okay. And and you know, these guys have ideas too, and yeah. but yeah. So we'll continue. I mean, everybody yep, feels fine. And, and and staff and so you feel that that's a Appropriate, right? Yeah, that's fine. You, yes. you guys want me to get rid of the cemeteries out of there? You know, just hang in okay. there. I mean, we can always cross it out when we're <coughs> more cutting and slashing or adding, uh, you know, for now. But that kind of makes sense. The other thing is when you look at a number of um, uh, public or public benefit zoning districts, and Doug, you've got a good example here. And the public cemeteries and crematoriums that you have here, uh, a lot of your public um, zoning district or public benefit will say, just like you're saying here, these are allowed provided that you provide a landscaping, you provide screening from an adjoining residential area, the you provide setbacks. this, you provide yeah. that, almost like a conditional use, but yeah. It's, yeah. it's more performance standards. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that even when they're talking about um, community centers or educational centers or golf courses, you know, they'll they'll say provided that almost like some additional requirements, especially if they're close to residential. Well, that was, that was the biggest thing, yeah. and, uh, the setbacks for the parking and, and different things yep. like that yeah. are very important when you're when you're up against the residential district. Yeah. Well, and you've got it on the second page too. I love it. I mean, and, and we can kind of you know expound on that, where you've got compatibility with surrounding neighborhood. It's a government building, and so on and so forth. So those are important in in here. And the other thing I noticed on the very last, as far as the signage, and I thought B three. That Jerry, you felt that that was a pretty I, I, good. I like that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I did well. There. Plus, if we are talking about a new um, stadium or something else where they do depend on, you know, like the Twins or the Vikings, you depend on advertising and they, the owners want their names out there. And it is off-site, but it does 
fund a public uh, facility that this will cover? Well, when you look at the Westside Ballpark somewhere, um, they run a tournament every year. They have to advertise, but at this point they cannot you know, for their ball tournament. And they're the ones that are funding it. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah, and they okay. they need that knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we can just move in. I really like like the, uh, where where it's going. Okay. New business. We already talked about number one, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two. What? Um, what is your, your um, a year ago, around that? Go ahead. A year ago, approximately, uh, the, the water house in, uh, uh, we looked at the redoing the zoning uh, petition to rezone it was uh, submitted. And it was denied because we didn't want to do spot zoning. But at that time, there was discussion about are there alternatives or other ways to help uh, with that situation. Uh, uh, we also realized that when you look at our codes, and we're not going to decide this tonight, but we want to get the door opened again so that we can look at options. And I think we need to look at a broader picture. And looking at this myself, when you look at our definitions within our zoning code, uh, we have a definition for a bed and breakfast, but if you go to page two of that new handout of the, uh, no, excuse me, uh, go to uh, chapter 1105, and right in the beginning of 1105, you, you go through some definitions. Mm -hmm. And in our definitions, we have a boarding house. Okay. A building other than a motel or hotel where for compensation by prearrangement for definite periods, meals or lodgings are provided for three or more persons, not to exceed eight persons. We have that definition. <coughs> uh, we don't have a definition for a bed and breakfast per se in our definitions right now. But when you go to, um, and I can I made myself some notes here so as I move along. When you go to, uh, in our R1 district, so now you gotta flip about 10 pages in. Within an R1 district, you get to uh, 1105, zoning districts and the map, and we define residential districts, business districts, and industrial districts, get into some PUDs, so, we're about, is that? it's going to be 1105D is what we want to look at. The R1 and R2? R1 and R2. Page 32 of 143, if that helps you. Well, yeah. yes and no. If you go off our Sterling oh, okay. modified right. version off, and which is on online, page numbers are on there. That's why we're going to do, give you a revised chapter 11 next meeting. We only did chapter 5 this time because it's got page numbers on it. When you look at our actual book <laughs> yes. that we have to update, it doesn't have page numbers, it's just aggravating. We, so. we go according to uh, the copier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love copier. Page 32, 143, yeah. So under 1105D, one and two family residential districts, permitted uses, you can see you can have one and two family dwellings, rural and urban agriculture, garden markets, nurseries, public parks, playgrounds, and other uses of a supporting nature, essential services, and then you get to E. The renting of rooms. The renting of rooms or the furnishing of table board in a dwelling occupied as a private residence when in compliance with the building code and approved by permit from the zoning administrator. So what's well, the, We were trying to use that, but you know, it also is the definition of a boarding house. Exactly. Yeah. Well, really, so, as we yeah. go down this road, from your perspective, I think staff needs to bring back to you some additional information on boarding houses, versus bed and breakfast, yeah. or what's a table board? Yeah, <coughs> to me that would be food. It's, not in, our yeah. it's not in our definitions. Yeah. 
And uh, if you go to uh, the internet, you put table board and you get the provision of daily meals, okay. board separate from rooming, a tabletop, a table. <laughs> Is it room and board or room or board? Yeah. yeah. So that's a yeah. table board. Okay. So there's no doubt when whoever wrote this code back in. Uh, those Stone Age? The, the point <laughs> not quite. No, I'm but, but here's where they're trying to put bed and breakfast, apparently. Yeah. But there was no such term, probably, in but that day. There day. probably wasn't a term yeah. back then. And there should be a definition in our definitions yeah. for bed and breakfast. Yeah. So we need to expound on this. Because yeah. when you look at what happened back a year ago, one of the requests, a letter came in from a neighbor that had some good merit in that perhaps the city should develop two types of bed and breakfast. One for your you know, common, everyday bed and breakfast type I use. That letter here. I know, I'll, I'll get it for them, but we want to look at the bigger picture first and then we'll get that letter and talk about it some more next month. Uh, or you develop a second, second criteria for bed and breakfast that would allow you to have uh, outside meals for the public. Uh, All that, out. Yeah, and that, that gets to be a very shady yeah. area yeah. because if you're going to let outside meals come in, uh, that's not the definition of a bed and breakfast. I realize that, but that's what people are leading there. So we need a separate well, that definition. Could be, that could be something else. That could provide board from an outside source or catering service or something or other else. Well, that was could be something. That's else. not what we wanted to do, though. Right. No, 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 I mean, we're talking generically so that it could be covered. But you, you know, they're talking more of a uh, so, quasi-restaurant type, almost like a coffee house or... Well, it would be by appointment only. Okay. A tea room by appointment only or something. Okay. But now we're going to get into this little bit of a gray area because if we can have a tea room by appointment, and that's what I think the commission and staff needs to get more detail. Is there a way to do that? without jeopardizing our definition for a business district. And if you can have a small cafe in a residential one or two family district, well, why can't I have my tattoo shop there? Mm -hmm. or why can't I have my beauty shop or my, my deer cleaning business on the uh, west side, which yeah. we shut them down? I mean, we have to be a little bit careful because what we do for one has got to apply in other situations. So we need to do a little bit more research as we go down this road. Is what, I'm what is what is the difference between a bed and breakfast versus a boarding? Boarding would be more long term. Yeah. Yes. Boarding would be by the month or by the week, or bed and breakfast would probably be by the day. And a boarding house often includes meals. Okay. It may. All okay. meals. So the person. <coughs> oh, oh, okay. A bed and breakfast is like, only one meal. Okay. Just breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we have to have a definition short. for both. So my thought is we need to get everybody on the same page so that when we say boarding house, we all think of this, not what uh, yeah. we think a boarding house is or what a bed and breakfast is or what we, you know. Yeah. So I think we need there to get some third, definitions. The, the then there's definition. a, definitely a third one. Yeah. Uh, I, I do need to mention something, though. Uh, I'm not sure if you were here, but in June, um, the commission did recommend uh, moving forward with the definition of a bed and breakfast. Uh, to um, move it forward for a public hearing, um, and it, along with um, getting motels out of there. And in February, yeah, uh, Randy seconded by Frank that uh, the ordinance be amended to include the bed and breakfast facilities as a CUP, and then in June, we approved the definition for a bed and breakfast. Now, that what you're asking for may be outside of that definition. So what we're trying to do is... So you is, have a definition of a bed and breakfast? Uh, it hasn't come uh, before the public hearing, though, to, to add it to our ordinance language. Uh, because we had also asked, and we were right in the middle of, of a huge project, so we approved it with the idea that that with other recent changes like deleting motels from uh, our three district um, was going to be, uh, we were going to hold a public hearing, but, but we had a huge project to finish. That so that's it. already been, been approved, <coughs> so what Jerry I think is getting at is that we can look at 
the um, boarding house, which possibly this might be, but we need to tighten up our definitions and, like you said, be on the same page. Now, that's not to say that some bed and breakfasts might be allowed a seasonal dinner or something, I think. Haven't, isn't that what you've had in the past? Um, we, are, like, we are currently licensed by the by Morrison County. That's public health. Health department. Right, okay. right. To serve breakfast to our guests. Right. We are also licensed to serve tea to our guests. But that's we public health, serve, right? Yeah. Right. right. And they fall under a different criteria. But it but helps there's, because there's, you would need that. Right. Well, we can serve we can serve anything we want for tea, as long as we don't serve more than 10 people at a time. Mm -hmm. but and that's what your- a sandwich. Yeah, that's what your permit from public health says. Right, right. right. And that would need to be folded into right. your, you know, this condition use um, too. Have you um, looked at Lanesboro to find out what they're doing? Um, there's- So good examples? Well, there's potentially going to be a bike trail coming through the falls. And that 13, would be 13 years ago, Lanesboro had one B&B &B and one dumpy, divey little motel that was, they were both struggling. The bike trail went through. Today they have 13 B&Bs and thir 13 motels, and you can't get a room in that town. And so, you know, that is that's a, that's <laughs> that's possible that will happen in the fall, in mm -hmm. which case it would be good to have all of this in place. Yeah. Ahead yeah. of the way. Um, so Lanesboro yeah. has had to deal with a lot of B&Bs coming in. So that might be a good resource. Right. Well, that's it depends good. on where they were located, too. You know, right, I mean, right. so we would need right. to research right. that. Right. Right. But like I yeah. said, they probably have gone through this already. It might be a good ideas. resource mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. some language. Well. Not B and B. I mean, that's pretty universal. You know, when you look at fifty zoning ordinances, and they basically say the same. Uh, you, you know, it, it, your mind has a picture of a B and B because of how it has evolved, and and then boarding houses. I mean, I think of World War II. I see boarding houses. <laughs> you know, yeah. is this the newest yeah. house a boarding house? Mm -hmm. The, yeah, the, the newest, the old kind of hotel. Is, is that, I thought that was they, a, it's is not that a retirement? It's, it's is room. that a retirement? Yes, yeah. but they have a room. They each have a room. They don't have an apartment. They have rooms and they get all their meals. Well, they're SROs. Yeah, they're single, so would be a single room. room residences, but that's different. That would be a, like a boarding house then. They, that, that's what that's would, that would yeah. fit a definition, right. certainly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's completely different than what we we're doing. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> we're more exactly. like a high-end hotel. Yeah, more like. Well, yeah. yeah. But. Or like a, you know, yeah. like a family motel. Or just, yeah. Yeah. But there are restrictions for bed and breakfast as far as the number of occupants, too. In the city ordinances? In, in most ordinances, it may be eight, maybe ten rooms. Because when you get over that, then you're kind of considered either a hotel right. or motel. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right. so that's where I think Jerry is saying, you know, we all be on, we'll all be on the same page. Um, currently, motels are allowed in R threes, yeah. but I think you're in R one or two. They're R one. And you know, we really are consumer friendly here, but. But we really have to see, you know, how you fit in the neighborhood too, and and if it starts looking like a whole, I don't know. But there might be a way where you can have seasonal um, festivities and wow. you know built in as a conditional use or you know possible. Well, but the whole you know being open to the public idea that we had originally brought forth, we kind of rethought that. Don't want to do it, but. If we have a party that has bought out the whole house and their whole family is there and they're there for Christmas, it would be great if I could bake them dinner. You know, uh -huh. they want that. People, yeah. the public, the, the public wants that. 
Or but if you want to have a birthday well, party, says your wife. certain meals. It doesn't say just breakfast. But yeah. there again, that's different than a restaurant or even a tea yeah. house because right. it's by, it's, like you said, it's, it's. Well, it have to be by equipment. Yeah, by it's by appointment only, so that makes a lot of difference too. It isn't it isn't a walk in off the street type thing. No, you don't get into the parking issues and the traffic issues yeah. and some of that. And okay, right. Does that say certain meals? It does say certain meals. We do not restrict it just to breakfast, and many zoning ordinances don't. They just say certain meals. And this is in the new one that you wrote up that has uh, a. This was here? the one that yeah back in June. June. Okay. 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 So we're going to revisit that, but we want to make sure yeah. that we're on the same page with yeah. the public hearing. And I also yeah. when I look at that, I thought, why don't we call it a boarding house? So I think we need to, at least in my mind, try to make sure our definitions and our, our logic and our. Okay. Well, and understand the use you're talking about. I mean, I, I realize that we don't build zoning ordinances around a single person, right. you know, but a, a, but a single land use, and we want to make sure we understand. The other thing that can happen is that the bread, bed and breakfast up to the eight or whatever could be just plain old permitted, but under conditional use, right. under there could say, um, seasonal, seasonal uh, dinners no. or by appointment or you know some of these other things because then you really do get into and some of the land use impacts. And if you go back to that R1 definition, so it's a permitted use to have a table board. Right. But a, like a boarding house with room but, and board. But by conditional use you can have more than three. Mm -hmm. Now I don't think that was... More than three what? More than uh, you know, some wording again. Okay. Um, that's why I want to make sure that we're on the same page in our existing code. Again, it was different, different back then. They yeah, it might it. be under R3, though, because it's oh. not under R1 as far as. Right, so you go to the next page. So under R1, one or two family and permitted use is the renting of rooms or the furnishing of a table board. Okay. And go on, it lists then home occupations that are not transferable and you get to conditional uses. Yep. Number two, D. Yep. Number one, a home occupation which does not meet the criteria in subsection D1H yep. of this section may be conducted following the issues of a conditional use permit for a home occupation. Yeah, what number is that? D1. Uh, two, D2, two, D1. One. So now yeah. you could interpret yeah. that to mean that by conditional use, because of the other one is permitted use. Yep. You can have a table board. And now you could get a conditional use, use to go beyond that. To go beyond that, yeah. But to me that's confusing. We should change our verbiage to be bed and breakfast, not table boards, and bring it up to speed to look at these other options which would be allowed by conditional use for seasonal or however we want to do that. Yep. So where does it say um, the uh, renting of rooms, the conditional use, if it's more than three? I see a the one. D1E. D1E. I have that, no, I but I don't that. have I a that says more else. than three. No, I wasn't there. I found that somewhere else. Oh, okay. Uh, you found that under no. home occupation for conditional use, right? But that's not called a home occupation because... Wasn't that um, in the R2 or 3? Or is it the R2? Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we want to we get our facts to get together so yeah. that we're not jumping around yeah. and make sure that as we move ahead, we... Yeah. So basically, we're looking at three different things. We're looking at boarding houses, bed and breakfast, and then, for lack of a better term, like a tea. A tea house. Tea house or a tea... Tea, tea, room. tea room. Yeah. Tea room. Okay, and, yeah. and there can be a conditional use area under one or more of those uses yeah. that could perhaps Allow. expand some yeah. of those but with conditions <laughs> yeah so that would be yeah so my thought yeah. for our next meeting and you're gonna have two public hearings for sure i would suspect the overlay for the church oh okay will be one and Mr. Gangle Hop hotel. with his hotel mm -hmm. two. would be two mm -hmm. and if we have enough time we'll start talking about these definitions what we can find and present to you uh, to uh, yep. make sure that we're started. on the same yeah. page. Which ones now? The the boarding house? I want to do boarding house, bed and breakfast. Not bed, we already did bed and breakfast. I know, but bring it back because you have new board members. 
Yes, yeah. using oh, the definition okay. we had before. But, but okay, you got yeah. new members It just here. seems like we're starting to go backwards and, you know. We're just going to finish that process we started. Sounds that good. We put on the back burner. Sure. Make sure we're all on the same we page. Did <coughs> we did have back We did. We put because that on the back burner. Because also the motels. Because yeah. we did our, our two of the big projects. Yeah. So. Yeah. If it's okay with the board, that's the direction we're going to go is Sounds get some good. definitions first. Yeah. Go to Lanesboro or somebody else if we yeah. can find uh, other communities that have something that might be a, uh, a hybrid. Almost. A hybrid. Yeah. yeah. It would have to be more of a hybrid because bed and breakfast by themselves are pretty restrictive because they do allow them in residential districts. So they really have to blend in. So they're kind of restrictive, but there could be condition uses. And then. Um, Jerry, can we then, from the back burner, bring the motel? Right, we'll do that at the same time. Can we? Yeah. Because <laughs> then, we, then, we, then we feel we really are making oh, progress. We've made lots of progress. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. We Luckily, we had some hard. people that were content and, and yeah. uh, patient with us. Well, thank we, you. We did the science. Yes. We, did, we did almost all of our overlay PUD districts are oh. resolved. Yeah. So now we're going to move yeah. ahead and come back. We've work. had some huge, you know, updates or just trying to get things, you know, the way they should be and we, you have not been forgotten, believe me. What, what if there are some, like I said, hybrids that would be almost between a boarding house and bed and breakfast, we'll, we'll look at, at that too because it sounds like perhaps that would be, but more suited to what you're, you're, you're looking at, guys. Would it be possible to get a copy of that definition of a bed and breakfast? Sure, it's in our, our it uh, minutes. Um, I've got one here that you can just make a copy of, but it, but it should have been in our June minutes. Okay. Huh? June 11th? Yeah, yeah. You want this? Thank you. No, we got it. Yeah. Maybe if I can get a copy of that too. Are they online? No. Are books online? No, no, we have to break up that one. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of work. There it is. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. Guys, okay. um, anything else, staff, that you can think of that you want to just touch base on tonight? If not, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Seven thirty-two. Okay. Uh, okay, second. I got it. I will second. So, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. We are adjourned. You'll promise you'll go home and, and you'll get better. Get better. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I get better. Yes. Um, and thank you guys for yes. coming in. You're welcome. You know, because all the input that we well, can thank get. You for all your hard work. No, and I, I like no. the idea, like you said, we need to get ahead of the curve and get it in place so that when, you know, hopefully, when it happens, we'll be prepared for it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd welcome some competition. <laughs> well, you have a beautiful house. Uh, furniture. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we're kind of trying to change the whole perception of a and &D. That's right. Well, stereotypes have in your mind. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm, I'm just saying is that that it's a pretty good there is a de you know a definition of bed and breakfast mm -hmm. because they do show up in prison. Did you turn that off? Yeah, I did. It's on. Right. And, and but, like I said, there are, there are there are hybrids. No, but there are hybrids that are coming up because it is so restricted. And they're becoming more and more popular. Oh, yes. And some of them are turning into well, that, that's or catering, you know, for special events. And B and Bs ordinarily don't allow that because. You usually don't have. Well, I'll just do it. 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 i will just do it 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 i
Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I have because, to tell you be a challenge, that yeah. my, I have three sisters, and uh, you said was in the I, back room. Which were married. Yes. Well, Do you have those definitions, Jerry? Or? I have to look them up. No, I don't have it. Oh. Do you have your copy of those definitions, Jean? Or? I love it. You know what? Mine's a draft form. Oh. They, Robin, just, I suppose, to be legal, because these were the draft Thank I you. worked off of. Yeah. And th these weren't the minutes from the next okay, well, day. Okay, well, you're going to find the dark. Are you going to get copies for her because she requested those? Yes, or? yes. You so want copies. I would like a copy, yeah. Very good. Yeah. At least then so, I, I know that they're, they were in the approved minutes. This was so the draft. So, how do, do I have um, to request I would it again? Or? To ask if you can have a copy along with. Um, okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. That way then I know you have the official minutes. Yep. Not my oh, this was everything for tonight, though. I think so. Wouldn't be in here, would it? The definitions? No, because no. Uh, it was back in June. Okay. Alrighty. Our Thank you. Between February and June. I mean, because we contacted them. Because they have motels in residential <laughs> areas. Of the Okay. When you get it for that other yeah. lady, would you just Absolutely. and then just give me a buzz? Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty decent. He's pretty intelligent. So yeah. Hey Doug. Hey Frank. Oh yeah.